Okay, so real quick, I wanted to walk through um, the example toy car lab report uh, so that you have a better idea of the different parts of your lab report that you are going to write and turn in. Um, notice that there is also a rubric um, and the checklist for these lab reports. If you follow the checklist, uh, you will get all the points for this lab. There are no surprises. It is a very straightforward process. So let's take a look at the main features of this lab report. So the toy cars, they, they were the red and blue cars that you were marking the positions on the ground with. Um, we always start with a purpose statement. Okay, and the purpose tells us the two variables that eventually are going to be in the logger pro graph um, that we have and the equation that we write from that graph. So in this case, it was to determine the relationship between the position of an object and the time it takes to get to that position, specifically for an ob object that travels at a constant rate or speed. So that's the toy cars. Um, in the apparatus section, you'll need to title this apparatus, uh, and you will just draw, to the best of your knowledge, the lab setup. So in this case, we've got a, um, a car, uh, and then a meter, strick, a meter stick is drawn so that you know that you're trying to measure with it. Uh, you just want to sort of give a rough idea of what's happening, but make sure to label everything that's there. Um, and then here, I've got a list of the equipment, so you should always list the equipment that you're using. Um, uh, let's move on. The procedure. So sometimes I give you a written procedure and you can just uh, rewrite that for your lab report. Um, but if you want to, you can kind of summarize or write from memory. Um, but you do need to always have the independent and dependent variables listed along with control variables in the procedure part. So like for um, the toy car lab, the, the dependent variable is always the y axis. Oh, sorry always the y-axis and the independent variable is the x-axis so we have position for the dependent and uh, time for the independent then we controlled things like the car's mass didn't change um, it was going you know constant speed so that's kind of controlled and it was only on one surface you have the same person timing that sort of thing uh, the procedure needs to tell me how you are making your measurements uh, and if you are doing any calculating you didn't have to calculate in this lab but let's say you were to take your positions um, and calculate something from them. Maybe you're calculating velocities from the positions and times. You would need to put that in your procedure um, and you would need to talk about how you came to the measurements used for that calculation. Okay, so your data table, uh, you can make a data table and handwrite it or you can literally go to your logger pro file, uh, right click on the data table and copy it. It's really easy to just copy the data for the analysis, um, same thing, you will need to copy your uh, Logger Pro graph. You can literally just right click and copy it and then paste it into a Word doc, or you can do a screenshot or a screen snip or something like that. Um, but you're going to print out your Logger Pro graph and paste it into your handwritten lab report, into your composition notebook. Uh, it needs to have a label, and I need to see the specific equations. So that means the number and the unit. Uh, are both in for the slope and for the intercept. So I need to see the specific equation for each object written here, as well as a definition of what sort of relationship there is, if it's linear or if it's not. Uh, and then the conclusion, you can write your conclusion out with numbers that correspond to the checklist, so you get all the points for the lab. Um, there are eight things that you need to do. The first is you need to restate what sort of relationship there was between the variables that were identified and the purpose. Um, then for number two, you're going to talk about what the slope means. So for the toy car lab, we said that the slope told us how fast the object was going, and we called that velocity. Um, then for number three, you justify how you came to that conclusion. And in this case, we just talk about the units of the slope. Um, we're cent centimeters per second, so a length over a time, which indicates an idea of fastness. Um, you can group two and three together as sort of one little um, mini paragraph for yourself, uh, but you need to state what the slope is going to be. And you'll do the exact same thing for four and five for the y-intercept. So for example, in this lab, the y-intercept was the starting position. Um, and you can talk about in number five whether or not your intercept was significant. So remember the 5% rule that we talked about. The 5% rule determines um, if your y-intercept is significant 
or not. So if your, if your y-intercept is less than 5% of your maximum y-value, you can say that it's zero and it's insignificant. Here, you would want to do a calculation of that. And you can see that for the toy car lab, um, I have a sample calculation here of how to calculate what percent of the maximum y value it is. Um, basically, you just take your maximum y value, find what 5% of it is, and ask, is my intercept more than or less than that? For, oops, sorry, six, you are going to write the general equation that we got. Um, and you need to do this with the correct variables and have the variables li listed off to the side, like you can see here. In seven, you're going to list any new terms. Uh, for this lab, basically just velocity was the word that we came up with. And then in eight, you are going to talk about um, any kind of error that is associated or that you think might be present in your lab. You are never allowed to say human error. Please never use the phrase human error in this lab report um, or on an AP test. The AP test graders will look down on you if you use that phrase. Instead, just identify a source of error and talk about how it could have affected your measurements. So like maybe you were really slow when it came to marking the position of the car. Well, that meant that the car was actually a little bit ahead. Like your marks were always a little bit ahead of where the car was. Uh, and you would have noticed your position versus time graph kind of shifting up. And maybe that's why you had a Y intercept that wasn't exactly zero. So that would be the place where you talk about error and, and how it could have affected your results. Um, so yeah, that's the, that concludes this short video about what the lab report should look like. Make sure you follow the checklist. There's the bell. The checklist for the lab is going to give you all the points that you need. It's going to be great. And I'm always here to answer questions. Once you've done the first lab, um, it, it's a lot easier to do the next lab because they all follow this same format. Good job. Thanks. Bye-bye.